Hey guys, it's Big Mike of BigMikeTrading.com. So continuing our series of answering some questions that I receive. Uh, this guy wants to know, when are the Fibonacci guys going to admit that it's all BS? Uh, seriously, when did 50 become a Fibonacci number? Um, okay, so here's what I said, and then I'm going to go into some more detail. Uh, there are such things as self-fulfilling prophecies, meaning that if 90% of the traders think that a 38.2 or 61.8% retracement has a lot of meaning and they trade that, then guess what? It's going to, in fact, have a lot of meaning. But most of the time, I believe in this, uh, I'll call it random line theory. Um, and really what it, what it comes down to, I ran this test, and for the YouTube watchers, I'll put the link to the random line theory thread, which has a lot of great discussion, uh, down below the video. Uh, but I have to warn that the, the thread seems to be misunderstood. So here, here's what I tried to do. With that thread, I used a random number generator um, from a website called random.org, and it's been a long time since I created this thread, so I'm trying to remember. But I think that what I did is I entered, um, it was back for oil, I think, when I was trading oil. And I would enter like the the weekly uh, low and the weekly high as the two, uh, you know, minimum and maximum numbers. And then um, I think I was generating four random numbers every single day. I was generating the night before. So, you know, Sunday night. I would generate the random numbers that I would use for Monday. You know, Wednesday night, I would generate the numbers that I was going to use for Thursday. So it was well in advance. I posted them well in advance. And these were completely randomly generated numbers. And I put them on a chart, posted everything in advance. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know that when the following day came, it looked like the market was respecting these random lines, you know? we would see price trade right up to a line and then slam on the brakes as if there was resistance there. And then we would see price come back to this other randomly generated line. And it was almost as if there was support. Now you guys need to know, I've been through it all. I've been through all the Fibonacci stuff. I've been through the Murray math lines and all these other kind of lines. And there are just a million and one indicators out there to throw some sort of a, of a horizontal line on your chart. Okay. And really, um, the, the general question that this guy is, is asking actually applies to a lot of different indicators, not just horizontal lines in panel one, not just support resistance indicators. I mean, this could apply to CCI and MACD and RSI and everything else. And here's, here's what I think. I think that first of all, uh, you know, just because you're trading a four range chart or a 1000 tick chart or a four better Renko chart or whatever, it doesn't mean that everyone else in the world is trading that. Now, there are some givens um, across multiple time frames, like swing high, swing low, but you have to keep in mind that when you're looking at a really tiny chart, you know, the swing high, swing low may be, you know, 15 minutes old. Um, and if you're looking at a daily chart, the swing high, swing low could be, you know, weeks old. So, um, when you're, let's take the Fibonacci example, whenever you're drawing a retracement, uh, you know, the, the daily trader may be seeing a completely different 38.2% retracement than the, you know, small intraday tr trader um, because the daily trader may be going back, you know, two weeks ago to that swing high to draw his retracement, whereas the intraday trader may be going back, you know, 10 minutes to draw his. Um, so there's, there's really... Uh, not a lot of, of confluence between the Fibonacci numbers from one time period to another or time frame to another. Uh, the same thing is true of pretty much any type of traditional indicator, like any type of an oscillator or any type of a histogram. More or less, they're all, like 99% of them, are all dependent on the time frame that you're running them on. Okay? Um, in fact, I'll even throw in, I, I've seen people who uh, were trading on interactive brokers data, which is snapshot data. They filter the ticks and only send you burst of ticks. Uh, it's not true unfiltered tick data. And then the, I've seen these people move to, to different data feeds, you know, Zenfire, Rhythmic, whatever, trading technologies, whatever it is. And they're getting a lot more ticks now. 
and they're like, oh, you know, uh, all my all my indicators changed. I like my old way better. Well, I mean, doesn't that prove, <laughs> if nothing else does, doesn't that prove that the indicator itself has nothing to do with with really anything? Um, if you liked the old way better, it was simply because you became accustomed to the old way. You started to develop a sense of the market based on what it was doing around these indicators. And then the indicator didn't change. But what changed is you're now receiving more market data, not more price data, but more market data, you know, a more complete picture of the of the actual ticks if you're using a tick based chart. And now all of a sudden you don't like the indicator anymore. Um, this is true of moving averages, uh, CCI, RSI, whatever. You know, moving average is going to be different on a five-minute chart than it is on a sixty-minute chart. Uh, the only thing that that's not going to fall into that category is the VWAP, the volume weighted average price. That's going to be at the same level, uh, no matter what size chart you put it on. Okay, uh, which is actually one of the reasons I really like the VWAP. So if you go look at, at that random line theory, and you can see. First of all, it was misunderstood because um, people literally thought that I was trying to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, trying to say that this random number generator is generating usable signals, you know, that I should trade from. That, that completely missed the point. The point was is that you, th you think that these signals are actually useful. If I hadn't, how about this, if I hadn't told you it was random, and if I had told you I slaved on this indicator for three years, I thought about selling it for $3,000, but you know what, friends, here it is for free. It would have been downloaded 5,000 times and people would have been going all crazy for it, okay? But instead, I told them the truth and I said it was completely random. And the point that I was trying to make is that your mind plays tricks on you. It, it looks like that price is responding to those levels, but it is not, okay? Uh, I don't care if you use pivots. Uh, I don't care if you use uh, square of nine, and I can't even think of all these other ones out there where they have all these horizontal lines all over the place on the chart. But the fact is, is that just because you think price stops or respects at a certain level, it doesn't mean that it has anything to do with that indicator or that level. That The truth is, uh, your indicator might match something as common as yesterday's high or as common as yesterday's close or uh, maybe as common as today's open, that kind of stuff. You know, if you're looking at weekly pivots, uh, floor pivots, you know, I, for the longest time I was a big fan of, of floor pivots. And let's face it, floor pivots are much more simple than like a Murray Math line, for example. They're, they're based on just, you know, open high, low close. Um, it's it's uh, it's not any kind of special math or 38.2 or 61.8 or whatever type of a stuff. Um, and I liked floor pivots, but the, the, the truth is that really you can use them or you cannot use them, but price is always telling you the same information if you just go look. If you just if you just know where the weekly high is or you just know where the weekly low is or you just you know can kind of, gauge, you know, the halfway point between today's close and yesterday's high or whatever, you're going to be able to visualize these things on your own. And I think you're far better off doing that than you are trying to load up your chart with all these horizontal lines, um, because then you start to assign weight to these lines and they really don't deserve it. Okay. These lines don't deserve your attention or, or your admiration because they're not special. And in fact, they can do damage to you because you can start to rely on them. You can start to count on them. You can start to take trades solely because price is coming up to a gibberish line, you know, that makes absolutely no sense in the terms terms of the market. Uh, and you're going to lose. Naturally, you're going to lose. So that's my answer to that question. I uh, hope it's been useful and no disrespect to anybody that is trading Fibonacci or anything else that I mentioned, because the, the point that I'm making is not that Fibonacci is gibberish. The point that I'm making is that it's how you perceive it, okay? It's what you do with the information. Um, now, Fibonacci is actually a little bit special uh, because there's a lot of people that use Fibonacci. You know, there's probably a lot more people using Fibonacci than there are using Murray Math Lines as an example. And I don't, I don't mean to pick on, on Murray, 
Um, I just can't think of any other indicators right now, and I'm sure that Murray has put a lot of work into his indicator, but the thing is is that in terms of a self-fulfilling prophecy, if there's a lot of people that are going to just go short automatically at a 50% retracement or go long or whatever, then it kind of automatically becomes a uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. Not that 50 is even a fib number, like this guy was saying. All right, guys, I hope that's been useful, and uh, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll be posting more of these Q&As soon.